Hi boys and girls, chapter five today. Our vocabulary word is pantheon. This is the group of all gods and goddesses. So we are going to see that the trio travels to meet all of the gods and goddesses that live on Mount Olympus and they all drink a special nectar. Pantheon means all the gods and goddesses. So today, chapter five, you are going to see the names of all different kinds of gods and goddesses on Olympus. Each one has a special focus, so something that they are um, known for. Don't worry about that at this time. I want you to focus more on the trio. And I'm also going to let you know some of the names are tricky to say, so I'm gonna do my best and you can do your best to sound them out. All right, chapter five starts on page 23. We flew across the earth, up a jagged mountainside and into the clouds in a second. We found ourselves standing in a glowing misty throne room. Mount Olympus, said Hera. Fred, Sam and I gasped in one voice. Wow. We had tried to imagine what Mount Olympus might look like when we built the set for our play but this place was way beyond our imagination. Golden light and warmth filled the air. White mist swirled everywhere. Eleven robed people stood talking in groups. Twelve thrones lined the room. Wait here while I go gather the gods and goddesses, said Hera, and don't touch anything. You break it, you bought it. She laughed at her own joke and walked over to the other gods. We stared at the incredible thrones. Each was different. The biggest one had an emblem of an eagle clutching jagged thunderbolts. Our man Zeus's seat, whispered Sam. The throne next to it was covered with carvings of horse heads and waves. His brother Poseidon, said Sam. The next was all fancy gold and jewels and ironwork. Hephaestus, the blacksmith, said Sam. Next was a fierce looking vulture's head thrown. Ares, continued Sam. How do you know all this stuff? Asked Fred. Fred, if you had a brain, you'd be dangerous, answered Sam. We've only been studying this stuff and writing it into the play for the last two months. Fred whacked Sam with his thunderbolt. Knock it off, you guys, I said. We may need that thunderbolt to find the book and get out of here. We're going to need a little more magic than this, said Fred, holding up his bent thunderbolt. Sam named the throne with a lyre, the one with a winged staff, and the last in the row with the bunches of grapes, Apollo, Hermes, and Dionysus. And the other side must be the goddesses, thrones, just like our set, I said. Yep, said Sam, and he named the thrones like it was a quiz. Peacock throne, Hera. Wheat and fruit, Demeter. Owl, Athena. Dove, Aphrodite. Moon, Artemis. Estia doesn't have a throne. She takes care of the charcoal fire over there. Congratulations, said Fred. Now, do you want a medal or a chest to pin it on? Right this way, divine other, divine ones, said Hera, leading everyone over to us. I have some new talent I would like you to meet. The gods and goddesses drifted over around Hera's throne. Sam nervously adjusted his glasses. Fred straightened his thunderbolt and tried to look tough. I hid the golden apple behind my back. Olympians, said Hera, I want you to meet this trio of very charming beings I just met down on earth. This is Sam Orpheus, friend of Nike. Sam bowed and strummed his lyre. Fred Cyclops, follower of Reebok. Fred lifted his thunderbolt and flexed his arm. And Joe Paris, cohort of Phila. I nodded and kept both hands behind my back. Please introduce yourselves to our guests, said Hera to the Olympians. An angry looking man with a trident stepped forward. Poseidon, god of the sea, and I should be king of this bunch, but that no good brother of mine tricked me. 
I'm Demeter, goddess of the crops, said a woman holding a bunch of wheat. The ugliest guy there took a limping step forward holding a giant hammer. Hephaestus, god of blacksmiths and the working man, and, and lucky for him, husband to me, Aphrodite, the goddess of love, said a voice like honey. I looked over and saw the most beautiful woman I had ever seen. I suddenly went all hot. My head buzzed, my heart pounded, the room started to spin. Oh, turn off the love rays for a minute, would you? Said the goddess carrying a bow. Call me Artemis, goddess of the hunt. A hunt? A fight? I'm there, sir. Ares, sir. God of war, sir. A tough-looking guy wearing a metal helmet waved his blood-stained spear from side to side. He winked at Aphrodite. Let me at them. I'll rip their heads off. I'll slice their guts out. I'll... Apollo, said a young fellow with a soft voice, ignoring Ares, twin brother of Artemis, god of music, poetry, and medicine. You are so weak you couldn't lick a lollipop, said Ares. You are certainly strong, said Apollo, but bad breath isn't everything. If you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all, said another goddess. Sam nudged me. Hey, check it out. She sounds just like your mom. I looked again. There was something spookily familiar about here, her. Amestia, goddess of the hearth and home. Nah, I said, just, she just sounds like everybody's mom. Hermes, messenger god of travelers, merchants, bankers, and thieves, said a guy with wings on his sandals. Athena, said a woman holding an owl, goddess of wisdom and... And parte sang out a wild little guy dressed mostly in vines. Dionysus, god of wine and party time. Dionysus twirled a quick dance step. Ares rolled his eyes. Hera looked over the crowd. There, I think that's all of us. All except Hades, of course. He stays down in that gloomy underworld he rules. Sam, Fred, and I shivered at the thought of that nasty place. And the supposed king of all of us, my husband Zeus, who seems to be better at disappearing than ruling, added Hera in an annoyed tone. I wonder where he could be. Sam looked at Fred and me. We all shrugged our shoulders. Well, forget old Thunderbutt, said Hera. We'll start the party without him. You tell him, said Dionysus. The rest of the gods and goddesses laughed and cheered. So, entertain us, said Hera. We looked at the assembled gods and goddesses. They looked at us. There was a long pause. Are you talking to us? said Sam. No, I'm talking to myself and you overheard me, laughed Hera. Of course I'm talking to you. Of course, answered Sam, laughing nervously. We all realized we were about to be revealed as the fakes we were. A clever trick would be nice, said Athena, goddess of wisdom. Something with a good dance beat, shouted Dionysus, god of wine. Well, I do know one song, said Sam. He pushed his glasses up on his nose and plucked a quick version of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star on his lyre. Dead silence. Weak, said Apollo, god of music. Very weak. I think we should rip his arms off, said Ares. What have you got, Thunderbolt boy? Me, said Fred. I, and I think that was the first time I ever saw Fred look more than a little nervous. I think it might have had something to do with the way Ares kept waving around that bloody stained spear. Oh, you wouldn't want me to do anything with this thunderbolt, said Fred. Trust me, unless you happen to have a thin blue book with silver markings on it. Anyone got a thin blue book? Everyone stared at us. This was one tough crowd. No, I didn't think so, said Fred, but that's okay because for the best trick ever, the guy who got us into this will now get us out of it. Take it away, Joe. This is boring, said Demeter. Can we go back to our nectar and ambrosia now? Hera looked thoroughly annoyed. Fellows, 
Tricks, please. Don't bore us. You don't want to feel the wrath of the angry gods and goddesses of Mount Olympus. No siree, said Sam, pushing me forward. We positively do not want to feel the wrath of the angry gods and goddesses of Mount Olympus, do we, Joe? The disappearing quarter trick? Throw the bums off the mountain like you did to me. Sorry, I have to keep looking at this name. Said Huffy. Hephaestus, the rubber pencil trick? Let's twirl their guts out slowly and listen to them scream, said Ares. A single bead of sweat trickled down the length of my back. Fred and Sam looked at me. I faced the not very happy gods and goddesses of Mount Olympus. It was a much tougher crowd than Jessica and Cynthia and Max and the rest of our classmate gods and goddesses. This was a crowd that needed nothing less than an impossible trick. Okay, and that is where our chapter ends today. So as you reread, you can pay a little bit more attention to each of the gods and goddesses and what they're known for and what they, um, you know, have with them as their trait. Um, but I'm glad you paid attention to the three boys this time. So you should have noticed that they are very nervous, okay? They are in front of all these gods and goddesses who are, you know, telling them what to do and telling them to show tricks and all they really want is that blue book. So as you reread, you can pay a little bit more attention, like I said, to the um, gods and goddesses and, and keep on your list, keep track of each of them, okay? If you um, are keeping your mythology list, you'll see that I have added a couple of different things since the last chapter. And I will go ahead and add the rest of the names that we learned today. And hopefully you're able to keep track um, in your workbook so that you can keep track of all these gods and goddesses. The other question that you are going to answer today will be, why do the boys think they need to perform an impossible trick for the gods and goddesses. So why do you think they feel like they have to do something impossible or really tricky or really crazy or really different? All right, uh, have fun and we'll see you next week back for chapter six.